Good afternoon fret friends, um, new project on the bench, um, a guitar, I've, had not, I've not had this particular got a guitar before because it's brand new, but it's a model I've had in recently and the guy saw my video and decided he wanted to bring it to me. It is a brand new Epiphone EJ200 SCE, so SCE, what, what, what do you think that means? I'm not sure. Anyway, it's got a Fishman pickup. It's not supposed to have a Fishman pickup on there. It's supposed to have an Epiphone one. So I said to the bloke, go back to the shop and tell him. Anyway, let's look at a beautiful looking thing. Uh, Fishman, cheapest version they do, pickup or EQ system with a pickup. Gold Grover tuners. A very solidly built, ornate looking and nice sounding guitar. So why is it in if it's brand new? Well. The guy says it hurts his fingers when he plays it, and there's a couple of reasons for that. One, the action is stupidly high, and two, I think these strings are a little bit fat. I, myself, only play light strings on acoustic guitars. I have a 1048 set on mine. These look to be something like, I don't know, they could be a 1052 set, could be an 1152 or whatever. Let's have a quick measure and we will find out. Bear with me a second, grab the caliper find out exactly what strings they are. Probably not as heavy as I think they look, but that's because I use a really light set on my acoustics. Always have done, always played light strings on my acoustic guitars. So let's have a look. I've got my caliper here. Change it to inch of inches and it will give us a measurement. And let's see where we are. Well, that's a 52. That's a, that's an 11 is it? 11, so it's an 11.52 set. Did someone say 10.52? That might have been me. Yeah, it's definitely 52. Well, it could be a 12. It's a 12.52 set. I would say 10.52, but that's fine. So very good. Um, yeah, strings are too heavy for a beginner. I would be sticking a set of 1048s on there and my choice of guitar strings, my preferred choice is DR strings, Dragon Skin. Made in America, coated, uh, you can pick them in sets of two for about 14 quid. Um, I've compared them with, um, what's my expensive things, begins with E, can't remember. Anyway, whatever, Elixirs, that's a, I prefer them to Elixirs by quite a lot. Anyway, so what are we going to do? Well, let's look at the action at the 12th fret. I'm already seeing it. it's looking over three millimeters to me. So they're going to be higher than I'd like it. I'd like to get that down to about 2.5. So what I'm proposing to do is, I'm definitely going to cut the nut slots because the strings are high over the first fret. And I'm going to remove the bridge or a saddle and I'm going to take some material from the bottom of the saddle and just bring the action down, not too low. Right, that's a three mil into. We are between 2.75 and three mil there. I certainly would like to take half a mil off there. Off the action at the 12 fret. 2.5, it's over 2.75 but it's under three mil. So let's see how much under it is. It is basically, it is a hair under three millimeters there um, at the first right we're looking at 0 0.2 0 0.75 three quarters of a mil certainly too high i'd like to get that down to about 0 0.25 above the first fret there so we're going to bring the action down on the knot we're going to bring the strings lower to this first fret uh, we're going to remove some material from the saddle. I'd be looking at, what do I want to move off there? We're going to want three quarters of a millimetre off there. So a mil and a half off the saddle. I'm going to move about 1.3 millimetres off the bottom of that saddle there and that will bring the action down uh, on the 12 frets. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm also going to check the frets while we're here. It's an absolutely brand new guitar. It should not need any fret work. But how many times have I said that? I'm not doing any fret work anyway. I'm just going to set this up 
and remove some material. It is a new guitar so I'm going to charge him not a lot. Normally if you've got a high press of 14th where the neck joins the body. In this instance, in this case, we have one high fret, that's two from the end, I'm not even going to bother touching it. And the centre last fret is high. That is it, the frets are absolutely fine for what we need to achieve. So, I'm going to remove the string, well in fact I'm not going to remove the strings, I'm going to carve the nut slots, I'm going to get this action down, I'm going to turn the camera, I'm going to show you what I'm going to do, we're going to remove the strings, I'm going to remove the saddle, we're going to take some material from the bottom of the saddle, we we'll get the action right. Once I've got the action right, we're going to take the strings off. We're going to oil the fingerboard, polish the frets, pull it back together, and send it out. I'm going to charge you 35 quid for this. Um, not a lot of money at all, uh, but that is my price for a brand new guitar set up. If it was having strings, I'd be charging him 45. So not an expensive job for the owner. But that is it. He's got another one to bring in anyway, so. Send him away up with this one, nice and cheap, and when his other one comes in, which is going to need more work, we're going to charge him full price. How's that? That's how we work things here. So, nut slots. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to be looking at, we're looking at the height, or the, the space between the top of the fret and the bottom of the string. And ideally, this side, I want to be around about 0.2 of a millimetre, up to this side about 0.3. So we've got a, 0.25 on air at the moment, I could do it all with that. A bit high on that one, so I'm going to take my brand new Hosco nut files and we're going to find the right one for the right slot. So if we're going to 1252, I've been thinking 12, 17, 24, probably 34, 44, or 32, 42, 52. So we're going to see what we've got. There are 11 in here. For the 12, I'm not using the 10, I'll certainly be going up with the 13. I've not had these out. I mean, I did use them yesterday, it's a 5056. So I'm going to get the right ones. 32 will be for this one. 28 will not need. Got a 46. Do we have a 42? A 36, if not, we'll go slightly, slightly a bit wider. There you go, you know, 32, 42. Hopefully, we'll have a 52 or a 54. We don't. We'll go with the 50 and we'll widen it. So that's those three. We're going to want a 24, which I have. 17, which I don't have. So we're going to go with a. What's that? That's a 16, we'll widen that, and a 13, so we're going to go 13, 16, where off there, about 10, 13, 13 for a 12, it's going to be 17, so we'll go with 16, 24, so about 24, 24 should do for there, that's going to be fine, we're going to go with these, we're just going to widen the slots, And that's it, we're going to refine this. So, first one, with that being a 12, we'll take the closest, which is slightly above, and it's a 13. These have not been out of the packet, most of these, I only used about three. These were £125 for the set, by the way, for those of you who want to like to know these things. Ready to go gung ho, just a little at a time. Good thing about these nut slotting files is they cut the perfect semicircle. Still way high. But take your time, remove less than you need to, because if you knack, if you go too deep, I was going to swear then, if you go too deep, you'll end up replacing the knot. That's going to take time and it costs. So I'll look 
open that's low enough next one very high I'm going to take 16 Now because the 16 is not going to be quite wide enough, we're going to actually do it at an angle and we're going to flare this slot open a little bit. So now we've cut some depth, just a slight angle and this side if we can, just to flare it open a little. Keep going. Now enough there, next one. And that's it. Basically, I will take these out again and clean these before I put them away later. That's why I'm going to leave these ones out, the ones I've used. So number 24. Flare this just a little bit wider. So you see how it's working. Set the action at the knot. Um, my wife's at the door, so bear with me a second. I'm just going to turn the video off. Sorry about that, my wife was just back from shopping. Right, carry on. Next one. 32. Same again. Quite a bit to go on that one. Talking you know, just a little bit lower. Good thing about cutting these nuts slots a little bit wider is you, they'll also be fine with other gauges of strings, even thinner gauges. <laughs> Very good files these. 
I used them for the first time last night when I was cutting a knot on, on a Gibson Les Paul standard. Just a little bit more. That should be there. That's fine. And the last one, 52. You can probably hear my wife in the background, it's, it's fine. I should tell the dog to behave. The dog always gets very excited when we've been shopping. He'll be in all the bags right now, going, ooh, what's here for me? much bigger the file than I actually need. I need a 52 and that is a 56 so I'm going to swap down to a 50 and we're going to angle it if I indeed do have a 50. I'm sure we have a 50. So let's have a look. 46 50s here. Because we're going to be going with a 52, same again. It's slightly angled, just to give us that little bit extra. And that, my friends, should be the nut finished. And that's it, and they are all noting freely. So the next thing we need to do is, we need to bring the action down here. And the only way we can do that is by removing material from the saddle. I'll just move the camera. There you go, you can see all of the guitar there. So the only way we can lower the action here is by removing material from the saddle. So I'm going to take one and a half millimetres from the bottom of there. And there's a couple of ways I can do that. One, I could use a Dremel tool with a cutter on it and we'll cut across the bottom. Or I can just take the saddle off and we'll get some sandpaper on a flat surface, on a flat piece of board and I'll just take the saddle and we'll just remove it a bit at a time and just keep testing and checking. Um, that way we'll get a nice flat surface anyway. So I'm going to crack on with that, I'll show you a little bit of it. Um, just come back and see that. So wearing a mask and goggles, I have rough shaped the saddle. Uh, I've taken about one and a half millimetres off the base. You might just see remnants of a green line on there. Uh, using a cutter disc on a Dremel. Well, it's not a Dremel, it's a Black & Decker version of a Dremel. Um, but that's all done. So all I'm going to do now is, I'm going to get a block of wood, a flat piece of wood. Put some sandpaper on there. And I'm going to sand the base of this. And I'm going to clean it up and I'm going to put it back in the guitar. And this should give us the height we need. If I need to remove any more from the base, I will do it by using uh, a sanding block, uh, just so we don't move too much, it really stings. Cutting, I didn't know this was bone until I started cutting it, I smoked straight away it was bone. Um, but I was wearing a mask uh, and goggles anyway. Welcome back guys. So, I removed one and a half millimetres off the bottom of the saddle. I checked the height, we are right on the cusp of, well it is perfect. We're about 1.85 above the 12 fret now, the action. Now I would like that just a little bit higher, so I've probably taken a tiny bit too much off the bottom of that saddle. But what I've done is, what I've decided is I could always shim underneath with a piece of maple veneer, which I do have in stock. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to get it strung up. Um, I'm going to be using a much lighter gauge string, which I've not got out. I meant to get them out before I started filming. Let me just... Um, Bear with me because the strings are in my guitar case of my acoustic and my strings acoustic strings of choice you would have thought maybe i'd probably play coated elixirs i don't and i never have uh, i do have elixirs on this guitar with on my own guitar but that is because i wanted to try them out and i do not like them anywhere near as much as i like the strings which are my default and i'm going to show you what they are in a second if indeed they are in this case, and I'm sure they will be. And they are. These are what my guitar currently has on them, or has on it. So the Elixir 1047s light gauge. 
I do not like elixirs at all. My string of choice on an acoustic DR Dragon Skin, handmade in America, coated. These last much longer to me than elixirs, coated elixirs, and they keep the tone better. First set of these I had was on a, a Yamaha, and I had them on for 14 months, and they were still sharp and bright after 14 months. So these are my string of choice. I've just been online to order some more, because this is my last pack, and this is for my guitar. I'm using my last pack on this guitar. Real beautiful string. I've got more on order, so I won't run out myself, but they won't, they won't be here till next week. So they are my string of choice for acoustic guitars. Go with me a second. Okay, you go in there, you go in there. So they are a light gauge, 1048s. Let's show you, there you go. I'm just reading the bump off the back. Dragon skin strings have a patent applied for coating from K3TM trademark. A technology coated that makes them the first coated strings that sound as good or better than uncoated strings. They are really amazing strings. It's exactly what the first band that received Dragon skin strings told us after playing pre production samples. Since then, we've gotten rave after rave from players who have tried them. I've been using this for about four years, something like that, and since I've started using them, I will use nothing else. Normally you can pick these up for about 16 quid for two packs or two sets. So I'm going to put this more like I said in the last set, these are going to go on here. But before we do that, we're going to oil the fingerboard. We're also going to oil the bridge. That's not good, that's just supposed to come off. And we're going to polish the frets also. on there something I recommend you do every six months or at least once a year because it's not only cleans the wood it also nourishes because rosewood does dry out if indeed this is rosewood I would assume it's rosewood but you never know nowadays do you so anyway While that's soaking in 10 15 minutes, I'm going to put some on the saddle also because this does dry up, often overlooked. Oh, that looks nice now. So, while that's doing its stuff and penetrating it into the wood. I'm going to polish the frets. Now the frets are already checked for level. Frets are level. They are absolutely fine. Uh, they don't need a deep polish, so I'm just going to polish them with a polishing rubber or two. Just grab some out of the drawer. There you go. Polishing rubbers I've got from Crimson Guitars. I'm not a big fan of polishing rubbers. But we're alright for polishing frets that have already been leveled and crowned and already set on a guitar. I wouldn't use these for polishing frets on a new fret installed. I would use sandpaper, the finest bit of sandpaper myself. But that's just me. Get that right to the corners, that oil. And that'll do its thing. We'll polish the frets while we're waiting. That's just a matter of going straight over the frets, rubbing off any badness. Much easier than getting uh, messy um, steel wool filings everywhere. you do it just bring it back to a nice shine once I've done this I 
I just wipe the excess oil from the fingerboard and we get the strings on. Strings are on, once the strings are on, we'll stretch them in, get it tuned up, get them stretched in, and the guitar will be good to go. I love setup acoustics, it's so simple, so easy. Once you've cut the knot and the saddle and set the action, you're pretty much done. Especially on a new one like this, you don't need to do any fret work. I suppose these make for quite a boring video because it's not a lot to see. I mean, what have I done really? I've removed material from the bottom of the saddle, I've cut the slots in the knot, I've tightened up all the tuners, checked all the nuts, bolts, and everything. I'll also check the strap pins, make sure they're tight. Policy for X, or the fingerboard. Can't be actually where I want it to be. It's just a matter now of waiting for this. Or also do its magic. Put some new strings on, get it set up. Really simple. I will come back when there's something interesting to show. And here we are, all done. Um, Epiphone EJ200 SCE, lovely guitar, big old thing, massive body on there. So I'm sure it's a jumbo size. It's definitely bigger than a dreadnought. But let's recap what we have done. Well, it came with the action really quite high. Um, so on looking at it, I saw the nut slots weren't deep enough, the action was high over the first fret, we've cut, re-cut the nut slots. I removed material from the bottom of the saddle, almost two millimetres. Um, we have polished the frets, oiled the fingerboard, oiled the bridge, um, tightened every nut and bolt, checked everything, re-strung using a set of DR Dragon Skin Light Strings, my strings of choice, they're coated, they're brilliant. And uh, the guitar is all done. I've just uh, tuned it in, track stretch the strings, tuned it in, and the owner is on his way to collect it. A beautiful thing. Uh, I'm sure he's going to enjoy it. The action now is about 2mm above the 12th fret on the bass, and about 16 on the treble side. Um, looks fantastic. Action's good. Neck's nice and almost straight. Got a little bit of relief in there. 0.2mm relief under the 7th fret. And there's a beautiful, beautiful thing. All he needs to do is stick a new battery in the Fishman EQ because it is running low. Uh, but that's it, the guitar is ready and the project is finished. So I've got to move on to the next one. But before I do, I'm going to remind you of my websites. Facebook.com forward slash NG17. That's Facebook.com forward slash N-G-O-N-E-S-E-V-E-N. -E -E also got fretfriend.co.uk. I am Victor. I am your fret friend. Uh, the shop, just remind you, the shop is fully open again, so if you want any work doing, give me a buzz, check me out. Uh, but that is it, as I just said, I am Victor, I am Fret Friend, and until the next time, as always, God bless you, be good to each other, and I'll see you in the next one.